Hi, this is Anita from A Bus on a Dusty Road, which is all about living your life as a global citizen. Today I want to talk a little bit about sailing and flying, and I think sailing is on my mind because recently I've started taking some sailing lessons at the Milwaukee Community Sailing Center. And by the way, if you happen to live around um, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, it's a great place to go, great group of individuals, and it's a wonderful place to learn to sail. I would highly recommend it. As part of our um, class that we were studying, the teacher started talking a little bit about, you know, comparing the wing of an airplane to a sail and how basically they can use the same lift type of principle. And it made me think about a blog or a question that I answered some time ago. And as some of you know, sometimes for my blog post, I go and I look at questions that people are answering. If I think it's kind of an interesting question, I might just try to answer the question. And one of them was sailing or flying. What's easier to learn? And the reason this kind of perked my interest is years ago when I was living in Hong Kong, I started taking flying lessons. So I know a little bit about flying and some a bit about going to flight school and, and about studying all about flying. You know, at the time in Hong Kong, we flew into the same airport as the commercial jets did. So the license we were getting was really quite a tough license because you had to really understand the airspace and understand the commercial airspace along with the private airspace. When people ask the question, what's easier to learn, sailing versus flying? The truth is that they both require a lot of money and they both require time and commitment. You know, whether you're going to learn to sail or whether you're going to learn to fly, you're going to have to be willing to put in the time for it. I've been taking this sailing course, as I've said, and you know, through the sailing course, we have a book and we need to read things, we need to learn things, and we need to go out. Most of all, we need to practice and we need to understand exactly what we are learning. You know, in the United States, when you're learning to fly, you can fly solo after mastering 20 hours of training with an instructor. To get your private license, you need to do at least 40 hours. So for most people, say minimum of at least two months to fly. For me, for sailing, you know, the course that I'm taking is about a 24-hour course. And a lot of that we are spending on the water. So again, it becomes a time commitment, but that's only just the beginning. Then you need to keep getting on the sailboat. You need to learn. You need to get in different wind conditions. You need to get with other sailors, get with other people, and to really be able to learn to master the boat. And it can sometimes take some time to be able to master a boat for sailing. So both of them whether you're learning to want to learn to sail, whether you want to learn to fly, it's going to take some time commitment. So you're going to have to really decide whether or not you have the time commitment to do it because neither one of them is going to be an easy thing and it's going to take time. You know, it takes skill to learn to sail and to fly. You know, the process of actually flying is, is a relatively easy to learn. But it's the other things such as the systems, the airspace, the navigation, the communications can all be pretty complex. Aviation has a lot of technical knowledge that you must learn and master. This kind of reminds me of a friend of mine once that was go went to flight attendant school and she quit. And I said, well, why'd you quit? She said, well, you know, you have to learn all that safety stuff. And I thought, yeah, you know, but if you're going to be a flight attendant, of course you have to learn the safety stuff. It's just not a matter of you walking down the aisle and say, would you like a Diet Coke? I mean, it, it, you really have to be able to learn the safety things along with it. And that's why it's the same thing with learning to fly, that you really need to be able to learn the systems, the communication. It's all can be a really pretty complex thing to learn. You know, actually once you're out in the water with sailing, you know, the process is really not that difficult. You know, the difficult thing is to be able to tack or to, um, to be able to, you know, to jive, to turn the boat around. That's what can take some time. But, you know, it's really, it's the hardest part, too, is getting the boat in the dock safely and getting it out of the dock. And especially if you don't have an engine, like the sailboats we were doing, that if you don't have any wind, you've got to kind of figure out how can you get some wind to be able to get out there, to be able to sail. It can really, once you're, but once you're just going on a straight course and you're just sailing, it can be relatively easy if you don't ever have to turn. But unfortunately, to be able to sail means you have to turn, you have to catch the wind, the wind can change, and you understand where the wind's coming from. You need to be able to read the wind. And so that can all take some time. Another question that people might want to know is like, what's the difference in safety between sailing and flying? And I see these as, as two different things. You know, even 
the very best of the pilot has gotten into issues when flying. You know, some of them have lost their lives in the process as they crashed. You know, the fact is it only takes one crash in a small plane to take your life away. This is what makes, to me, flying more of a safety concern. You know, really when you're flying, you only have like a minute or a second to make that decision. And making that wrong decision could be fatal for you and for the other people on the plane. You know, sailing also has safety issues, of course. You need to understand what the wind is. You need to understand, you know, what wind you could go out in. But it's usually not as life-threatening as flying is. And we were in our course and we were talking about that. You know, one thing you can do is you can put the boat in the safety position. If you're not sure what you need to do, you can basically put the sails down. You can sit out there in the water and you can think about, well, what do I need to do next? And then you can keep on sailing. So... Unless you're, you know, you try to sail in high winds or you try to, you know, sail in a thunderstorm or you capsize a boat. Well, then, of course, it could be safety issues. But generally, if you're following the safety rules of sailing, you should be OK. You know, most um, states or countries require that you have a life vest on at all times when you're sailing. So, of course, this can help with some of the safety issues. You need to have a license to be able to fly an airplane that you can't just say, hey, I want to fly an airplane. You need to have a license. You know, this is because in many cases, like I mentioned before, when I was learning to fly years and years ago in Hong Kong, was we were not sharing the runway, but we were sharing some airspace with the commercial pilots. And because of that, we needed to be able to understand the airspace because this is key for safety for those commercial flights and everyone else. So to fly, you need to have a license similar to a legal license for driving a car or a motorcycle. On the other hand, sailing, you don't really have to have a license. You know, if you have a boat, you don't have to have a license. You don't have to have a certification. You can just get out there and you can sail. So, you know, even children can technically, you know, have a small sailboat and they can go out there and sail and they don't have to have a license to, to show it. So really, you know, sailing, you don't need to have the same kind of license procedure as you need to have for flying. The next thing, of course, would be the stress, you know, like how stressful is it to sail versus to fly? And, you know, for some pilots, they find flying to be very uh, relaxing, you know, when you're flying, you're up there and you can see the world, you know, going on all below you. But with flying, if something goes wrong, you have to be able to make a rapid split decision or your life and the life of your passengers can be or may be in danger. So if you're the kind of person that really can't make those kind of split decisions or you really want to be able to take time to think about things, Flying may not be the best thing for you because really to fly, you need to be able to make those decisions and make the right decision because your life and the lives of others could be in danger. Whereas, you know, with flying too, you must be mentally prepared, you know, to handle an emergency, you know, because you only have a few seconds to be able to decide when that emergency comes, that's it. You need to be able to make that decision. If you get in trouble with sailing, you can usually, you know, bring down the sails. You can radio for help. You can put yourself in the safety position. You can even turn into the wind, which is the no-go zone, and you're not going to sail anywhere. You know, you could be able to, you know, swim to, to safety. So unlike flying, you know, with sailing, you know, you can have time to think if you're unsure. There's usually a, a big cost difference between the two, too. You know, learning to fly can be expensive. It can range anywhere from $4,000 to $15,000, with the average being about $10,000. Whereas, you know, sailing could maybe just cost you a couple hundred dollars. Maybe you go out with a friend and a friend teaches you to sail and it doesn't cost you anything. So, you know, learning to fly is an expensive commitment. It has something that you need to be able to want to commit to. If, you know, you want to learn to sail, it won't be quite as an expensive commitment. We love both flying and sailing. I, of course, fly quite a bit overseas, and I actually love to sail. And we really believe in, you know, living your life as a global citizen and living your life up to your fullest. And so if you want to learn to fly or sail, go for it. Go out there and do it and enjoy yourself. But make sure that you are safe in the process. 
This is Anita from A Bus on a Dusty Road. We really appreciate you watching our video. Consider subscribing to our channel. It's all about living life to your fullest and living life as a global citizen. Thank you so much for listening. We appreciate you.